Hi, this is David with David's Tutorials. In today's video, I'd like to talk to you about flying again. This time, it's about flying and flying safety, both for you when you take a commercial flight and for us military pilots. And I'm saying that from back in the days when I was a military pilot, I'm now retired. And I think you'll find this really fairly interesting. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is commercial air travel. Commercial air travel today is one of the very safest modes of transportation, especially when you look at the passenger miles, how many miles the airlines travel with people and their safety record for all those miles they travel. It is above every other mode of travel, bar none. Now, you can compare this if you want. I'm not going to get into it in this video. However, even as safe as air travel is today, there are air crashes that happen. They're happening much less frequently now than they were in the earlier days of aviation and air travel. And the farther back you go, the more frequent they were. But the reason for that is that every air crash is investigated down to the most minute detail, and they have to figure out not only why did that crash happen, but how can we prevent it from happening again? And they do a very good job of that. Unfortunately, there's one thing that is not addressed as much as it perhaps should be, and that is training of pilots, especially training to handle spatial disorientation and unusual attitude recovery. And that's what this video is about. Let me start off by first telling you what is spatial disorientation. Spatial disorientation is where your mind and every bone in your body is telling you that you are in a certain position, a certain attitude, climbing, banking, whatever, and the instruments are telling you something totally different. This is exemplified in the pilot training that I'm going to be telling you about. And the FAA tells us that spatial disorientation is one of the major contributing factors in many of the air crashes that happen these days and in the past. Now, I've watched a series on Smithsonian Channel called Air Disasters. And as a former pilot, I really enjoy that. And my wife will tell you that I very often wind up yelling at the screen, no, no, don't do that, or check your instruments. I will wind up yelling at them because they are doing things that are totally stupid. And the reason they're doing things that are stupid is because they haven't been properly trained to do the smart thing. Spatial disorientation is one of those main things. Now, let me share with you how the Air Force trained me and a lot of other pilots to handle spatial disorientation. It starts off in the classroom. They teach you all about aviation physiology and your inner ear. Now, your inner ear gives you proprioception. It tells you when your head is tilted to the side. It tells you if you're going up or down. It's when you go to one of these motion shows at Disney or Busch Gardens, and they put you in the seats, and the seats are moving. And what they'll do is, for example, when you are supposed to be accelerating, they lean the seats back and you're feeling the pressure back into the seat, but that's just gravity. But they do it in such a way that you don't detect that you have rotated, but you do feel the pressure back into the seat and you perceive that as acceleration. Now, they teach you about this in the academics in pilot training for the Air Force, and I'm sure they do it for other services that train pilots as well. The next phase after the classroom training is they put you in a link trainer. Now, a link trainer is basically the inside of the cockpit of the aircraft. In this case, it was a T-37 in the Air Force. They put you inside this simulation of the cockpit of a T-37, but it's just sitting on the ground. It doesn't move. Now, one of the reasons this is really good for training you in spatial disorientation and unusual attitude recovery is that you don't have any proprioception feelings, any feelings of stuff going on in your inner ear that tell you something's wrong here, I've moved in this direction. And one of the main things 
that the instructor pilots and the link trainer do is they make you close your eyes and then they do something with the aircraft and then they say recover and you open your eyes and you look and you see your attitude indicator the artificial horizon and it's all cockeyed some way and then you look at many other instruments on the dashboard of the cockpit and you are able to recover now the first time they do this with you they only put it in about a 20 degree bank and they say recover and you look at it and you say, ooh, and you move the stick and woo, and you recover and you level the wings and everything's fine. And this is the first reaction of every student pilot, every inexperienced pilot. You look at the artificial horizon and you say, ooh, I'm not wings level. So I got to totally recover and get my wings level. So when they tell you recover, that means return to straight and level flight. Well, they start getting a little bit more sneaky as you go more advanced in the training. And what they will do is they will put the aircraft in an unusual attitude and then they'll reach back and they'll pull the circuit breaker for your artificial horizon. And then they'll return the airplane to straight and level flight and they'll say, recover. And the student pilot opens her eyes and they see that the artificial horizon is all of a sudden cockeyed like that. And they go, ooh, and they take the stick and they jam it over to the other side to make it recover. But the artificial horizon doesn't move. And what they have done is they have just taken an airplane that was in straight and level flight and they have put it into an unusual attitude that needs recovering from. And if you do this in a live airplane up in the air, you're going to not like the consequences. Now, they do this not only in the T-37 trainer, they do this in the T-38 trainer. And when I was flying the Boeing KC-135, basically the 707 military version, it's the same thing. What they're teaching you to do is cross-check all the instruments before you put in any control inputs. This is critically important. It is so important that we have seen the air disaster videos on the Smithsonian Channel where pilots have seen their attitude indicator go out of whack and all of a sudden this actually happened. It was in northern Scandinavia. They were flying up to a uh, base. It was a cargo flight going north of the Arctic Circle and it was at night and so they didn't have much outside reference and being up in the northern Scandinavia there's not a lot of lights on the ground for reference so all of a sudden the pilot's attitude indicator started showing him climbing and climbing and climbing and he said oh no and he started pushing the yoke forward to get the nose down but it was the attitude indicator that had malfunctioned and he wound up taking the aircraft and that aircraft, fortunately, as a cargo flight, it only had two people on board and not several hundred or even more than a hundred. That aircraft plowed into the ground doing 650 miles an hour, almost exactly nose down because the pilot failed to cross check his instruments. He didn't look at his altitude indicator and see that it wasn't moving. He didn't look at his vertical velocity indicator and see that it was zero. He didn't look at his airspeed indicator and see that it was steady on his cruise speed and not decreasing as it would have been if he were in a climb. John Nance is one of my favorite authors of adventure books and he also involves flying. I believe he is, he's been a commercial airline pilot and he's also, I think, been involved with uh, legal work as well, but he's also a consultant on the Air Disaster series on the Smithsonian Channel. And on this particular video, he came on and he commented that pilots are trained that one of the first things you do when you encounter an emergency situation is go get a cup of coffee. There's no emergency that happens in the air that requires immediate control input unless you're in a combat situation. So what you do is you first assess the situation before doing anything. And that is the biggest thing that pilots need to learn. And inexperienced pilots, pilots who have not had adequate training, do not know this. And just like I told you right back in the beginning of link training, when the instructor pilot puts you in 20 degrees of bank and says recover, and you go, ooh, and you go zoom, and you have immediate reaction to recover it, 
it's everybody's first impulse to put in a control input and correct what you see is wrong. And that's the wrong thing to do. And the training has to overcome this. If you don't, you could be in huge trouble. Fortunately, in today's aircraft, there's a lot of automation that will keep you from overcorrecting like this. But unfortunately, today's pilots come to rely on that automation far too frequently. And they don't know that if something doesn't seem right, to cross-check everything and figure out what's wrong before taking action. Now, I had one instance of spatial disorientation that fortunately had no ill effects at all. I was flying my KC-135 over the South China Sea, and basically there's nothing out there, and it was some, some weather. There was clouds in the distance, and there was clouds down underneath, and a warm front had been coming in from the north, and it crept in under the cold air, almost like a wedge under a door. And the warm air was very moist, and the cool air above it was really kind of dry. And so when the warm air came in and it started getting cooler, the moisture in that warm air condensed and formed a cloud. So we had a cloud deck that was under us that was at about a 20 degree angle. And this cloud deck at a 20 degree angle, I'm sitting there flying straight and level. My artificial horizons has us going perfectly level. And I look at this cloud deck and the cloud deck's at 20 degrees. And I'm sitting here going, oh, 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 I need to put my wings level with the cloud deck because that's the horizon. You know, you're used to seeing the horizon, getting your wings level with the horizon. But if I had done that, we'd have started turning. And I cross-checked my instruments and I saw that the artificial horizon had us wings level even though the cloud deck was at 20 degrees and I looked at the compass and the compass was solid on the heading we were flying and it wasn't changing. If we had been turning it would have been changing and I looked at you know the other instruments in the cockpit and it said yes you're going straight and level and so I just believed my instruments and we kept going straight and level and we got where we were going. So there were no ill incidents from that particular spatial disorientation I suffered, but it was very vivid. I was thinking, man, we're flying at a bank, but we weren't. We were flying straight and level, and it was the clouds that were at the bank. Now, when I was going over this video with my wife not long ago, she said, yeah, but if your pilots don't know how to handle spatial disorientation, what can you do about it? Well, if you're in the air, there's really nothing you can do about it because you just have to trust your pilots and trust the automation that they have been building into the airplanes for the last 30 or 40 years that has been actually better and better and better. And I will take a commercial flight today without worrying even a little bit about it. Even though I'm not up in the cockpit where I would really rather be, I will take a commercial flight and I don't worry about it a bit because I believe the pilots plus the automation are trained really well. And this goes especially true for the larger air carriers. Smaller air carriers sometimes, mm -hmm, I don't know about that, but you know, you just got to trust them. And if I can sit up front and get my hands on the controls, I would much prefer that. But in any case, what you might want to do, if you know anybody in the airlines, have them get with their trainers for that airline and give them spatial disorientation training and unusual attitude recovery training. They need to learn to overcome their impulse to put in a control input at the first sign of trouble and sit back and evaluate all of the instruments. My wife will tell you, I will, one of the things I yell at the screen when I'm watching an air disasters episode is cross check your instruments. And that is true. You have to cross check and evaluate before you take action. So if more airlines will begin to train their pilots, take them up in a small airplane and put them in an unusual attitude and have them recover for it, from it. If more airlines would train their pilots in spatial disorientation and unusual attitude recovery, we would be even safer than we are now. That's all I have for the spatial disorientation part of this, and I hope you watch this before your next flight, and maybe you could get in touch with some of the airlines and have them watch this as well to provide their pilots with spatial disorientation training. I'd now like to tell you a little bit about how I'm making this video. 
I'm sitting in my studio, which is actually my dining room. I've got a green cloth behind me, and you don't see it now because the green cloth is going to be gone by the time I produce this video. I've got a little light over here, which is basically a fill light to get rid of all of the shadows that are on my face if I don't have it. And I am basically talking off the top of my head. I have to memorize every single one of these chats that I give you on my vlog post. And the reason for that is because I've recently had an affliction of macular degeneration. I had a periprompter that I had built and I would use a teleprompter if I could, but my eyes have gotten to the point that I really can't even read the print on my prompters. And sometimes I will bring up the notes on a screen on my computer off to the left here, and I will stop and I will look at it and I'll come back. And I just don't do that anymore simply because I believe it's a lot more effective if I can just tell you what's on my mind right off the top of my head. So thank you for watching this. As always, if you will give me a thumbs up, I would surely appreciate that. And the YouTube robots will know that this is a video worth sharing with other people. Leave me a comment down in the comment section below. And give me a little chatter on what you think of the video and what you think of the channel and what you'd like to see in future videos. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much. I appreciate every single one of you. And if you're not, you know what to do. Right now, go ahead and click that subscribe button and then the bell icon so YouTube will let you know when we post another great video right here on David's Tutorials and Vlog Channel. Meantime, share this with anybody on your social media, just your email correspondence. Take care, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.